So Apple just released two new versions of their Apple TV 4K that comes with a few new features, but should you buy it? I've been using the brand new Apple TV for some time now and uh, I'm gonna return this thing. And it's not for the reasons that you might think. I'm gonna show you the reasons why I'm returning the brand new Apple TV 4K third gen. And I'll show you the pros and the cons with this new Apple TV to help you decide if you should get it or if you should skip it. So whether you're thinking about buying your first Apple TV or upgrading your current Apple TV, maybe yours is a couple of years old, or even have last year's model like I do and wondering if enough has changed that you should upgrade. But before I tell you what I don't like about this Apple TV and why I'm returning it, here's what's new and the pros about this new Apple TV. First off, Apple now sells two completely different versions, a 64 gigabyte Wi-Fi version only for 129 bucks and a 128 gigabyte Wi-Fi plus ethernet model for 20 bucks more at 149 bucks. Though it might not be worth paying more for the ethernet version. More on that later on. Now starting off with the pros and what I like about this new Apple TV. Well, for starters on the outside, there's a new design. It's very similar to last year's model with a few minor changes. The packaging is now smaller. It's about half the size of last year's model and the box now has pull tabs just like the new iPhones instead of the satisfying plastic wrap on the previous models. The Apple TV box itself are a little bit smaller than last year's model. The TV phrase is now removed on both models. It just shows the Apple logo, which I personally like better. The port layout has changed a little bit as well. You still have the power on the left, but the HDMI and the ethernet have now switched. The ethernet is now in the middle and HDMI on the right. The Wi-Fi model looks the same, but just without the ethernet port in the middle. What I also found interesting is the, is the cooling fan appears to now be removed from the newer models. Now the remote is very similar to last year's model as well, which was a huge redesign from the years prior. And this remote is the best Apple remote that Apple has ever made. It gives you more physical buttons than ever before, like this touch enabled click pad. The trackpad and the buttons are all on one, so you can scroll with the trackpad. There's a power button to turn on and off the Apple TV, buttons for controlling the playback, volume, and the Siri button is on the side. Apple has now updated the charging port on the remote to USB-C instead of lightning, which is a much needed change and is now a little bit thicker than last year's model. Now, by having USB-C on the remote, this means that the remote will charge faster than ever before. That is, if you have a USB charging cable, because weirdly enough, there is no charging cable inside the box. I presume to save on electronic waste, since most people probably already have a USB-C cord with an iPad or a laptop. On the inside of the new Apple TV now brings a newer and faster processor, the A15 Bionic, which is quite the upgrade because last year's model was using the A12 chip, which is the same chip that was on the iPhone XS that came out about five years ago. Navigating the screen is gonna be a little bit faster, but where you really notice the difference is in launching apps and playing games. The A15 Bionic chip is also energy efficient, so that's probably why the fan was removed, because the A15 chip is able to manage heat better. Now, Compared to last year's model, the second gen, I can definitely tell a difference in speed and launching apps. It's not like a night and day difference, but it's certainly noticeable. I really don't think the Apple TV is worth upgrading to just for speed alone, especially if you have last year's model and just use the Apple TV to stream shows or watch movies. The new Apple TV also adds support for HDR10+, which allows for a brighter image, better contrast, and better color accuracy than regular HDR. But you're only gonna be able to get this with a TV and content that actually supports HDR10+, which is not that much at the moment. Now, probably the biggest change with the new Apple TV is wireless connectivity. Just like last year's model, the new Apple TVs both have Wi-Fi 6, and that allows for better wireless range and reliability. If you'd rather hardwire your Apple TV, say maybe you don't have a strong enough Wi-Fi range, then the Ethernet model might be a better option for you. Though it will cost an extra 20 bucks just for a gigabit Ethernet port, but you're also getting double the storage. The Ethernet port is not only good for a strong internet connection, but also supports thread, which the Wi-Fi only version cannot do. And it can be a smart home hub. Speaking of a smart home, if you have any smart devices like a smart bulb or smart plug, that supports Apple's HomeKit, which is Apple's smart home platform, or want to start building your own smart home, then you'll need a HomeKit hub to get started, which can be the Apple TV, either the Wi-Fi only or the Ethernet version, or a HomePod mini. Now, a HomeKit hub is needed to view the status of smart devices remotely, to control them remotely from anywhere in the world, and for automations to run. Like when a door is open, then a light can turn 
on. Now, Thread goes hand in hand with a smart home because Thread compatible devices create their own mesh network, which is separate from your Wi-Fi network, making devices like a smart bulb or a smart plug ultra responsive and more reliable than Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connected devices. Thread devices require a border router and not a third party bridge to work. So like the HomePod mini or Apple TV 4K second gen or later. Thread is a newer smart home standard and I'll leave more information down in the description below so you can read more about it. Now having a hardwired Thread border router and a home GitHub is an excellent idea for better reliability, but there's one huge flaw that Apple has when it comes to a smart home. And that is you cannot manually pick which device can be your home GitHub. So if you have a wired Apple TV and a wireless HomePod mini, then there's a strong possibility that the home app will automatically choose your wireless device over your wired device when a wired device is going to offer better reliability. Now, unless the Apple TV is your only home GitHub and you don't have any HomePod minis, then it really makes the Ethernet model with more storage almost not worth it if you're wanting to use it as a home GitHub. Now, with all that being said, if you don't have a HomePod mini and maybe you're looking into getting into a smart home, then the Apple TV with an Ethernet is a cheap upgrade for a very strong reliability and an excellent choice for a home GitHub. Otherwise, if you have a HomePod mini, I would say you wouldn't really get that much smart home benefit with the Ethernet model. Now let's look at the cons. What's not so great about the brand new Apple TV 4K? Well, for one, there is no extra remote features. There's still no remote finder built into the remote. This would help you easily find your remote if it drops in between the couch cushions. You can use a remote case with support for an AirTag to help you find it or even ask Siri, but that's an additional expense. Which by the way, this case for the 2021 Apple TV remote works with the new 22 remote with USB-C as well. It would be nice to have this remote finder feature built in like you get with the new Fire TV remote by Amazon. The buttons on the remote are also not backlit, which would make using the remote much easier at night. This is very similar to using a laptop at night and still being able to see the keys. You can get a glow in the dark case like this 3D printed one on Etsy by Derek from Printspire Designs that I'm a huge fan of. It makes it easier to see and find your remote at night and it's better than not being able to see your remote at all in the dark. And the second con I have with this new Apple TV is that it's not much different than last year's model. After using the new model for about a week now, I can honestly say I really cannot tell that much has changed. So the question is, should you upgrade? Well, here's my overall thoughts. If you don't have an Apple TV in general and looking to get your first Apple TV, then I would honestly recommend skipping this year's model and going with last year's model, the second generation instead. You'll still get a vast majority of features that the new models have, like Wi-Fi 6, Ethernet, Thread, and and a updated remote. That's just about half the storage, but apps and games don't take up that much space. So if you plan to play a lot of games, then you'll still be able to download a bunch of games. I am personally using the 32 gig of the Apple TV, and I have about five apps and about two games, and I've barely touched any of the storage. You can find a refurbished model on Apple's website soon for cheap, or they're currently deeply discounted to less than a hundred bucks. And last year's model will get you the vast majority of all the features that the new model has at just a cheaper price. Though the newest version without ethernet is like 30 bucks more so not much more but i really do not think that you'll notice much of a difference but let's say you have the apple tv from 2017 the one with the trackpad remote well if your apple tv is working fine then i probably would not upgrade it does have the a10x fusion processor that was in the iphone 7 a phone that apple does not support with the latest ios update however apple's chips last a long time apple still currently supports the apple tv hd from 2015 about seven years ago so i think longevity wise, I'd guess the 2017 model still has about two to three years max of software updates before it's no longer supported. Now, at the minimum, I would highly recommend upgrading to the new Siri remote, which you can just buy separately. And if you have the 2021 model or last year's model, then I would not recommend upgrading as I personally don't think there's nothing that much new that really makes it worth upgrading to. But by upgrading, you are getting USB-C on the remote, which is cool, I guess, a faster processor that's kind of hard to tell a difference, and don't with the storage, which is good if you need more storage for games, but apps and games are really small. So unless you're a heavy gamer, which most people probably aren't, then you're really not gonna be gaining that much. I have not heard anybody say, oh man, I'm running out of storage on my Apple TV. You already have the new Siri remote, Wi-Fi 6, a gigabit ethernet port, a thread, and a home GitHub support, which is what all the new models currently have. Though if you do want ethernet, then you would have to pay extra for that port. So why am I returning the brand new Apple TV 4K? Well, the biggest reason is 
is that it's very similar to last year's model. I think the 2021 version or last year's model is perfectly fine. I really love the Apple TV. I think it's the best streaming device on the market. I've actually made two videos showcasing some hidden features that you can do with your Apple TV, which I will leave right here and right here. So are you getting the brand new Apple TV? Let me know down in the comment section down below and thank you for watching.